Hey everyone, I just wanted to talk about the Pokemon Illustration Contest. This is a super great opportunity. I believe this is the first time that they're opening up to Americans. If you win, your drawing will become a Pokemon card. Or if you get second or third place, you also will get your... <laughs> you will be on a promo card. I mean, that is that is super exciting. I'm definitely joining this. And I know, as you can see, I'm a little bit late to uh, notify you about this, but I just found out about this like yesterday. So you basically have 20 days to create a masterpiece worthy of Pokemon. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to kind of give some highlights, some of the rules. I've read through everything, everything that they provided, and they provided a lot. It took me probably three hours to get all through all the material. There are going to be a lot of submissions. Just in the Japanese one alone, there was over 4,000 in the last one. So including a country with well, a significantly larger population, there are going to be a lot of submissions. So they're narrowing it down to, I think, like 20 that they're picking. So you really have to uh, follow all the rules, make sure you're, you're going to be doing this by the book. And they provided a lot, a lot. So let me just hit some of the highlights. First of all, you have to be a legal resident of either the U.S. or Japan. And basically they say that you're eligible to work there. Anywhere else, can't submit. You have to be 18 or older in the U.S. Or if you live in one of the backward states like Alabama, Nebraska, or Mississippi, those ages are different. So I would check that out if you're one of those people, those unlucky few. Also, <laughs> uh, only one artist can submit. So they're saying that they're not accepting things from a collaboration of people, but if they don't know, then I guess it's okay. Just make sure that when you submit, you are the only person representing that artwork. You're the only person mentioned in that artwork. You are the only person tied to it because they will toss it out otherwise. Also, they want you to represent their company well, so they're going to do a background check on you if they select you to be printed or put on the website. So that means uh, no criminal background. You know, you're, you're, you don't po posting a bunch of really ridiculous stuff. They want to know your social media and different things that you portray yourself on because they don't want the company to be associated with that. So th this isn't just a drawing contest. This is, this is also, they're commissioning you for artwork. They're asking for your ideas. So as a business, they're going to make a product that you're creating the artwork for. So keep that in mind. This is as much of a business thing. This is as much of a contractual obligation as it is a fun contest. So if you want to win this, you really should read through everything on the site like I did. But this video will give you the highlights. Make sure you stay in the boundaries at least. The theme for this contest is the daily life of a Pokemon. The daily life, enjoying a moment or adventuring. They really want you to be very creative in this. They want to see a side of the Pokemon that brings out its characteristics, its personalities, in a way that they said even they haven't thought of. That's a, that's a big ask. These people, that's their job. This is what they do. And they want you to provide them a deeper insight or something that, that that's memorable or informative in a way that they've never thought of. It's a tall ask. So you can't draw any shiny Pokemon, any Dynamax, any cosplay Pokemon, which are my least favorite, Gigamax, any of that, Max and VMAX, VMAX, Climax, all that stuff. None of that stuff. It's going to be by the book. It's going to be these Pokemon. And I'll show you. So these are the theme Pokemon and Pokemon reference materials. This is where you'll find the Pokemon that you can select. You can draw any one of these eight. I won't tell you which one I'm doing, but it's definitely not this cliche lizard. Definitely not. Or this overrated mouse. <laughs> or the My Little Pokemon. I'm not going to be doing those three. I'll tell you that much. They provide a lot of material. Look at this. All these different angles. They want you to be within spec. These are very important things. Focus on the height, weight, how that compares to your environment that you're building. And by the way, the environment is, is just as important as the Pokemon. They say the background is extremely important because the background is going to bring forth the story of their daily life. 
Additionally, you can't draw any g different genders of what they've given you, so you cannot draw a female Pokemon uh, Pikachu. This is a male Pikachu. They want you to draw this to spec. Now, it's not going to, you know, your drawing doesn't have to look exactly the same as this, but these are for your, you know, understanding this is how big his tail is compared to his ears. This is how big these stripes are, so on and so forth. They want you to draw it within the parameters. They're very strict about that. And you can find out about that in the interviews that they do, which we'll get to later. Um, you also can't provide any text or numbers in your drawing. No text, no numbers, nothing. As long as, especially if it's recognizable as text or numbers, they they said that you can give the impression of text if it's absolutely unrecognizable as any kind of character, then you can do it. But I I want it. You know, I wouldn't take that kind of risk because you don't know what they might see when they look at it and just toss it out. They also say you can draw other Pokemon or human trainers in there in your artwork, but they said the main focus and something they'll really be looking at is, is that Pokemon the main focus of that artwork? Is that Pokemon being portrayed at its utmost? So if you draw any other items, which they said you can include items from the Pokemon world, but if you draw items, if you draw trainers, if you draw Pokemon, if you try to draw any kind of semblance of text, Make sure that that risk is met with exponentially larger amount of value added. Be very consider that. Additionally, if you put any kind of humans in there, if they look like anybody intentionally, you have to get consent from them. So it's in the legalese, which is actually on the application form at the bottom, if you read through that, which I highly suggest you do, it talks about a lot of extra things that they don't go into detail on this stuff. And it's not as boring as you would think, really. But if you're serious about winning this, really, go through everything. They've given you so much. Additionally, you can... I'm not going to click Pikachu's. You can click here for a list of cards, and it'll show you. It'll take you to the database, and it'll show all the cards that Caesar is, is, is on. You really want to do that to make sure you're not going to be that you're going to be adding a card of value and not just copying one of these or adding something that's similar. It doesn't really bring a new perspective because that's what they're looking for, a new perspective. And and that's what they've also asked for in including an American audience is they want to see an American art style. They want to see somebody growing up in a different country, different kind of inspirations, different background. Holy smokes, he has a 320 HP. Jeez. I, oh, I see. He's Dynamaxed. Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, they're looking for that new perspective. They're looking for somebody that brings new value to it. Now, aside from that, if you come to Application Requirements, come down here, and this is going to be the main thing, technical specifications. I mean, there's a lot of things I'll get you thrown out, but this is going to get, get you thrown out right off the bat. It has to be this size. They're very specific about that in multiple, multiple places. It has to be one of these two formats, and it has to be RGB. If you don't know the difference between RGB and CNYK, then, or CMYK, make sure you know the difference. Because a lot of times, like Photoshop, for instance, if you work in that, it's usually CMYK default. So you want to change that. And this is going to have to do with their printing. So make sure you do that correctly. Also, three megabytes or under. These are things they mention in multiple, multiple ways. Now, you can do non-digital artwork. In fact, I'm not going to be doing my artwork digitally. I might digitally enhance it, but I'm not going to be doing a digital artwork. They said you can use clay, you can use yarn, you can use any type of artistic medium. In fact, clay and yarn have been used in Pokemon card illustrations of the past. But they said whenever you, if you take a picture of it or if you it's on a canvas or something, you have to be able to scan it. You have to be able to make it digital and put it into this format or it will not be accepted. Think about resolution. Is it going to be, is it going to be all grainy and stuff when I submit it? Is it not going to be quality? Because... If you look at the cards, they're quality. I mean, these images are perfect images. They're not grainy or pixely in any way. And if they are, then those cards aren't real. <laughs> so make sure it's a drawing that they can adapt to a card and won't have any printing issues. Think about that. So technical specs, business specs, art, and creativity. You have to think about all of these things. Also, the Pokemon, they're very specific about the Pokemon specs. And I, and I know that I said that, but I'm going to say it again. 
pay attention to the specs. If you make the neck too long, if you make the eyes too big, you know, I don't think that they're going to necessarily just throw things out because an ear's longer than it should be or something like that. That's being very picky. But if if I were them and somebody else had a great, a, just a great uh, piece of art as you submitted, but their specs are better, I'm going to pick that one. I'm not even going to consider the other one. Keep that in mind. There's a lot of people you have to beat out if you want to win this. Um, also, your illustration can have, it, it never, it, it can't be a previously published illustration. It can't have been, it can't have won any other contest. And it can't be anywhere, not on your DVR, DVD and art, not on your Patreon, not on your Facebook, your MySpace, your Instagram, your all any of that stuff can't be anywhere published. So when you're working on this artwork, keep it secret until you know the results. And because because Pokemon's essentially going to buy this artwork from you. So they don't want it anywhere else. They don't want it where anybody else can get it. Also, don't include any signature on there. No signature on the artwork. You're on the application form. If you want to come up with a, you know, if you have like an artist alias or something like that, you put in your first name, your last name, and then they have a line for that. You put in your illustrator name, and that's what they will use. If you don't put anything, then they're going to put your first name and last name. One more thing on the illustration. If you're going to create like effects around them, like Pikachu's like lightning bolts coming out or like flame is going across him or he's like... This burst of wind is coming off Charizard as he blasts through the sky or something. They said that's fine to create these like dynamic um, elements and effects, but make sure they don't detract from the background. And they say that multiple, multiple times. The background is going to be a large part of what they look at. And I think it's actually on this page. Yes. Okay. Interpretation and clarity of the theme, 40%. Creativity, originality depicted theme, overall design. These are really important criteria. The first round that they're going to do is they're going to narrow all the submissions down to 300, 300 art pieces of art. Those 300 pieces of art will be graded on these criteria. Then they're going to narrow that group down to the semifinalists to 100 drawings of those on these same criteria. And by the way, those 100 will be published on the website. They said around May 12th. Then they're going to narrow those down into like the 20 or so winners into an even smaller group. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is a main thing. This is a very wide, wide scope. That's why I suggest reading everything you can on this. They provided a lot of material, so I'm, 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 I'm expecting that they expect you to use it. Now, you can actually submit three times. You can submit three different Pokemon. You can submit three different drawings of the same Pokemon. Any combination of that. But they did say if you need to make a correction to the drawing that you can create a new drawing that corrects that, but it counts as one of your submissions. So keep that in mind. Also, you can't mail your artwork. You can't mail it in. They're not going to take it. So whatever medium you do it in, you have to make it digital. has to fit to these technical specifications, and then you submit it through their application, um, which I believe is at the bottom, entry form. I'll give you a quick view of that. First name, last name, alias or pen name, age, you know, all the rundown, occupation, that's interesting, but you don't have to answer it. Um, yeah, Let's see, link to portfolio, all this stuff, they wanna know that, which one you picked. Now, now whenever you submit this, you submit once, and then you go back and you submit again. They did say if you submit more than three times, you may be disqualified. So don't do that. Uh, I suggest that you read through this as well. They talk about third party permissions. They talk about, you know, the background check, what they're going to be looking for, you know, the type of people that they're not going to associate Pokemon with, all that stuff. So think about that. If you have a criminal record, hide it now. Hide it fast. <laughs> This one, I think, is one of the most important things. These are interviews with different artists, different illustrators that work there, and people, distributors, marketers, people that are going to be, first of all, judging this competition, but second of all, they work for Pokemon and they do this every day. This is what they're thinking about. This is their job. Read these interviews. I'm going to go through a couple of highlights, but they're really interesting. They're just interesting in general. They talk about 
what the artist goes through, their development process, all their research that they do on each Pokemon. They do a lot of research. Um, Egawa-san talks about how most of the time she spends researching before she even starts drawing. You know, they really go into depth about, you know, what they think the Pokemon feels like, what the texture might be, the varying colors, and, and not just about the flat 2D color, but about, you know, this 3D and how they interact in their environments and the, you know, trying to get into the mind and understanding as if they're actually really experiencing this Pokemon being right in front of them. And I think that's super cool. They really get into what they do, and I and I appreciate their perspectives that they provided. Egawa-san talks about, you know, she tries to answer the questions. Where do they live? How do they w- live? What are their strengths? What are their struggles? Now, some of the feedback that she gets. Actually, I want to show you this. I think this is really important. She talks about the production of this card specifically. Here's one of her roughs. It makes me feel better. That's probably that's probably as good as my submission's gonna look right there. <laughs> Maybe this good if I get lucky. But she talks about her process. This is some of the notes that she got back from Creatures Inc. Whenever they submit it back to her. Look at this. Like they're so specific about how high this should be, the arch of the back. You know, how, how this antenna should look or whatever it is. You know, how all the features of the Pokemon should look. The eye should be a little bit bigger. They are very into the specs. I mean, this is their world. This is the, a world, or it's a world of all, for all of us. But, you know, they've created these Pokemon and they want them to be very specific in design. And if you deviate too much from that, you may risk, you know, for the sake of creativity, you may risk losing... Um, losing the contest, you know. So, it's really interesting the way she talks about her job. I mean, I wish I felt as passionate. But as you can see, it's really long. But it's really in-depth, and it gives you a lot of information. So I really suggest you reading through these interviews. They really add to what the list of things you have to consider if you really want to be serious about winning. One of them actually won one of the contests and became an official illustrator now works for pokemon so this is one of them i just want to show you this is who won first place oh, that's amazing gosh i love look at these little marks i love this art style i've never i've never actually done this myself but i've always been appreciative of this like where the shading looks like little scratches and everything i mean that's just that's beautiful i understand why they won i mean this i mean it's great um but this I don't even care for this Pokemon, and look how, I mean, they make you love this Pokemon, they make you fall in love, I, I mean, these are awesome submissions, these really, try not to let this discourage you, although it definitely discourages me, that is just as good as the, the Milotic that was actually produced by the artist, and this, wow, my wife and I both agreed, we would hang this on our wall, so keep this in mind, you can look at past results here, interviews with illustrators and other people that work on the trading card game in addition to the people that are actually judging this competition so hint hint question and answer section about some other things the pokemon you will have to go here do look at the cards i mean that would be a bummer if you made something awesome and it was like well uh, somebody already did that Here's the prizes. Super cool. Who cares about money? Blech. I want my <laughs> illustration on a card into a promo card. That is so cool. Ah, man, I, I'm excited. So anyways, that's everything about this contest. I would definitely look up Pokemon illustration contest. Go to this site. If you're serious about winning this, go to this site. Read everything you can. I found everything, every word to be helpful. If you read everything, I think you'll come off understanding better what they're looking for and ultimately submitting the best submission that you possibly can. So good luck to everyone. And for sitting through all those rules and regulations and stuff, I'm going to open up some Pokemon cards, um, just as a little bonus. All right, here we go. Three random packs. Well, my wife picked them anyways. So they're actually, she picked one from each of the new sets, um, excluding Fusion Strike, but I limit her to three. So I guess we'll start with ooh, what's the lucky one? Point out the what's the what's the lucky one? Alrighty. 
Start with this. We'll finish on Charizard, then how about that? All right. These single packs, they put some serious glue on here. Keep the little kitty's hands out of it. This is, these are adult toys. These are for adults. Man, this is a good pack. I'm, I'm gonna try not to, not to destroy it, if at all possible. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. All right. Slack off. Slacking off. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We got to do this right. Um, There's the code card. I'll just leave that for you guys. All right. <laughs> Here comes Callie. All right. Hey, kitty. Oh, Ice Q. An astronaut helmet? Whoa, that is... Okay. <laughs> there he is again. Gossifleur. Oh, that's pretty. I like that one. That's nice. Oh, that's a weird fledgling. He's, he's, he's a little bit angry. Chin Cho chillin'. Got a reverse hollow fluffy. And a Drampa. Whoop de do. Oh and yeah, cool. Alright. <laughs> That's an okay one, I guess. Alright. Pikachu, what you got for me? What you got, Pikachu? Does it smell like there's good cards in there? Maybe not. Big old fat boy. Or as Max Mofo calls him, Obesachu. Obesachu. Oh, whoops. Toward a little bit. Just a wee bit. This pack feels weird. It's not like a normal foil. It feels strange. Alright. There's your code card. All right, go goat, go goat, go. These must smell very nice to her. That's a nice Eevee. Uh, Trubbish. I actually like this dude. Ship it, ship up, up. Choodle. Everybody hating on him, but he's. I think he's cool. I think, I think he's cool. Really? Ooh, I like that. That's a nice color. And, ooh, shaman. Shaman, you. Being so shiny, shiny. Cool, cool. All right, that wasn't that wasn't so bad. All right, let me borrow that for, for a sec. All right, Charizard, you still okay? You all right? All right, Charizard. Ah. Oh. Now hold on a second. Okay, whatever. That's that's a sign of bad luck right there. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a bad luck sign. <laughs> At least it's the same set. I would have been really worried if that <laughs> if it wasn't the same set. All right. All right. Go ahead and fight. All right, ooh, one of my favorite new Pokemon. Um, yeah, cool. Hope he has good attacks. <laughs> Vanillish, looks tasty. Purloin, winking it up. Hippopotamus, hip hip I don't know. Centret, chilling in the grass. Actually, it looks like he got knocked over. He's like, weird. Larvesta, Morlol, Passimian, shiny dude, and a Liperd. A lion to me. This is definitely using some dark tricks there. All right, well, nothing big, nothing special, but yeah. 
bonus.